This video is about setting your uh, work offset on a fan and control your G54 through to G59. Um, so let's just first of all go into that actual offset page there and you'll see um, the different offsets that we've got in there. So if I use my page key I can go through them. This machine doesn't have extended work offsets so it's just got G54 through to G59 and they're numbered 1 to 6. Uh, this first one which is the external one um, that will change everything so it's important that there's nothing in there unless you actually want something in there. Uh, you can use it but it shifts every offset by if you put 10 in that X it moves all these offsets by 10 mil. So you could do it but uh, it's uh, it's not really recommended. Some people use it and they put 100 in there and they actually machine the part, well I don't machine it but they run the program above the job by 100 mil and then like use it as a kind of a way of testing the program. So try and avoid that one. Now let's just go back to the position display first and look at all the positions and on your position display um, you should know what all these are and there are videos on all this kind of stuff if you want to watch them but the relative is the one that you can set yourself to anything you want and the machine doesn't basically look at it the absolute one is where you actually are in terms of position um, and that's not to be confused with absolute and incremental it is a little bit of a misnomer but it means your actual position where you are if your program says send you to x50 y50 that's what this will read when you get there now this is what I'm interested in at the moment the machine position machine position um, is normally from zero return so when the machines at zero return it's normally read zero now not all machines do this but all machines will have a zero position and that grid, that position, that never changes. So what we're actually going to measure when we write these offsets in is the distance from that zero position. So effectively, if you move the table by 100 million X and 100 million Y, you say to the machine, right, this is where my datum is. So whatever position you write in there is what is what you'll get. So if you look, if we look again now at the work offsets. Um, you'll see these figures in here and they're actually the positions that it's recorded from that machine position so effectively that machine position there could be recorded in there and that would be your G54 datum and it's really really easy to do to set so I've just put some positions in here so I've got something to record so in actual fact I'm sat at this position now and I've clocked up the center of a part and I want that to be my actual datum so in my uh, work offset all I do is go to the offset that I want to write this into it's not a bad idea to just zero these up you can just say zero input zero input zero import a lot of people zero these out when they're not using them so they know it's not used what we're going to do now is we're going to tell the the work offset to measure where the machine actually is at this point in time so if i'm going to say this is this point here is x0 and then i just say to the machine measure and you'll notice that all it's done is just put that machine position straight in there and if i do the same with y y0 and then say measure it's actually just put those figures in so you could just write them in it'd be the same thing it's just that this is a more accurate way now if you were if you knew where you were like if you were on the edge of the part you knew the part was 50 mil wide and you wanted to be in the middle you could say to this x minus 25 measure and it will put your datum in the middle of the part now i don't recommend doing this because you have to do some simple maths and arithmetic you can get the sign wrong all sorts if you do insist on doing it this way then always test the datum at the end so go into mdi and just send it to that position and set the datum at the end now the z is slightly different because in the z we've got the tool length to take into account simply because if we could just bring the spindle nose down and touch the top of our component we could just say Z0 measure which would work but it's not always convenient to get that spindle nose down and touch in the top of the part usually you can't do it well what you can do 
you can get the spindle nose and put a slip block say a 200 mil block or a 50 mil block and put that underneath the spindle and and the, the top of the part and you know your 50 mil from the part and then you would just say z50 measure uh, which would work or you can put a tool in there of a known length, touch that on the part, and then just say you're at that known length. So if it's a face mill or something like that, you could bring it down to where you're actually going to face mill, like I've got here. That face mill's ready to machine. So I can say to it, that's that's going to be Z0. And if I know the length of that face mill, I can actually just put Z, whatever that length is, measure, and it will give me the figure of where the spindle nose is now in terms of the datum so if I just put Z zero measure it will measure where the spindle is now but it won't allow for the tool so if I tell it the length of the tool and say Z whatever that length is measure so say for example that tool were Z one two three point six and then I just hit that measure key it actually sets my datum and you'll notice if you look on the uh, on the position display if you look at this uh, absolute position display now it's actually displaying the length of the tool because that's where the machine is sat it's sat the tool length away from the datum so that's its actual position now if you sent it to z0 now just smash that tool and go straight down so the spindle nose would touch zero because it's worked out that the zero is that distance away from where you are and it's put it in right for you so that's how we can do it. Uh, we can actually tell it where the machine is right now in terms of the Z. So Z is a bit more tricky than the X and the Y. Obviously, if you've got a touch probe or something like that, it's dead easy. Um, and, and I would recommend using some kind of manual type probe to do this because it just makes it way easier. So now I've got a live training video that shows you this being done on an actual machine now the machine I'm doing it on here has got a quill so it's got a double what we call a W axis now that quill if you're going to use that quill on the job and you're going to have that quill extended throughout the job you bring that quill down and set a lens for that quill in your work offset so it has a W figure you'll see it in this video it has a W figure in the work offset so say you wanted the quill to be permanently sticking out 200 mil you just put minus 200 in the w and then you'd have to activate that so you'd have to say g90 g0 g54 w0 and then the quill will come out to zero and then now you with your tool in there you can measure the tool and it will take everything into account as it should do but if you don't bring the quill out then you'll be 200 mil out on your figures when you bring your w out so it's a bit of a pitfall if you've been watching this just to set datums just ignore that bit because it's going to just confuse you if you feel a bit more advanced and adventurous watch this next bit and you can have a look and see how it's done but a w axis is a quill and it's really useful because you get access to all sorts of things you wouldn't normally you can poke into places that you'd never be able to get to normally so here's the other video oh just one other thing i couldn't be bothered to do me air but don't suppose anybody cares anyway so just in case you noticed, I just couldn't be asked to comb it. So your doubly is currently out 200 mil. And what you've got in your offset is minus 200 for your W. So that means that when we set the Z offset, we've got to bring that out to zero. In other words, zero, which is 200 mil sticking out. And, and that, is, that is telling it that the, the W zero is 200 mil out. And if you wanted it to be zero, you just put zero on, you put zero in the W and then have your zero, your W at zero return. We're going to go into MDI and we're going to press program. Yeah, and we're going to say G90, G0, G54, W. It's a shift key, shift Z. No, you don't hold it, just press it once and then press the Z. You see how that arrow's come up? Now when you press Z, it will give you W. No, no, it, no that's right. That's just to tell you you've shifted it. And then put zero, end of block, insert that or input it, whichever you want. And what that's going to do is that's going to send W to zero 
but it's going to take into account what's in G54. Now in G54, we've got a W of minus 200, which is what we're going to permanently have in there. And then we would knock the rapid down, okay, and we can hit that, and your W axis then will come out. You can see it coming out. You want to whack the rapid up. And that W is now at zero. And that's how we want it when we set the Z figure. So we bring this tool to the to the job, yeah. tell it how long the tool is, but we want it to take that W into account. Because like when I did it, it was 200 mil out. Because I, yeah, yeah.